mai kai ke mai luna mai e o na me ahuna no yau o na me le e ho mai e ho mai e One, zero, booster ignition, and liftoff of Discovery. When you think of space exploration, most people think of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. When you think of telescopes, observatories like Palomar might come to mind. And what about astronomers? You might think immediately of Galileo or Sir Isaac Newton. But what if we mentioned King David Kalakoa, or Mauna Kea, the tallest mountain on Earth, or the Venus transit. What do these subjects have in common? The answer is Hawaii's preferred place connecting our Earth to the stars. It is a tiny island dock within Earth's largest ocean. And it is a metaphor for Earth's place in the cosmos. Sitting upon the highest mountain on Earth, as seen from the depths of the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii holds a special place connecting Earth to the cosmos. First came the Polynesians, who trusted their navigational instincts to the nighttime stars above. They had names for their star guides. Kamaka, the point of the fish hook in the constellation Scorpius. Makalai, the little eyes within the Pleiades. Hoka'ula, the red star in the constellation Taurus. After the Polynesians came the Europeans in 1778 under the command of Captain James Cook, who earlier had been the commander of the British Venus Transit Expedition to the Polynesian island of Tahiti in 1769. Cook determined Hawaii's longitude and latitude and appointed Hawaii a place on the cartographer's map. He brought with him spyglasses, clocks, sextants, charts, foreign ideas and techniques that astounded the intelligent native population. But the new European ideas soon crowded out the old Polynesian ways of looking at the skies, and much of the ancient knowledge was forgotten for a time. A new awareness of the cosmos was reborn under the scientific patronage of His Highness King David Kalakoa, the Astronomer King. King David, or Kavika is David, Kalakaua, uh, was our last reigning king. Kalakaua was known for many things. He was the first king to travel around the world in 1881. He was the first visitor to look out of the Lick Observatory in 1882. He also had an interest in science and technology, and he wanted to be able to leave that on to his people. So he actually invited seven astronomy people from the Royal Observatory in Europe to come here to Hawaii okay, to view the Venus transit. He also opened it up to his people to come and see these um, telescopes and to interact with astronomers and I believe from what um, was shared with me many people were interested at that time and lined the perimeter of this area that was reserved just so that they could come and observe through these telescopes. Hawaiians supported the British Royal Society's efforts at recording the Venus transit in 1874. The mission of the British expedition was to observe a rare transit of Venus across the sun for the purpose of better determining the value of the astronomical unit, that is, the Earth-Sun distance, and from it, the absolute scale of the solar system. Although Copernicus had, by the 16th century, put the known planets in their correct order, their absolute distances remained unknown. 
astronomers still needed a celestial yardstick of astronomical units with which to measure distances among the planets and to link the planets to the stars beyond. The British expedition extended over a period of six months, from September 1874 to March 1875, the expedition attracted widespread attention from all ranks of island society. Those astronomers came here from Europe because there were five places that were some of the best spots in the world to view the transit from, for the Venus transit. And Hawaii was one of those spots. And Kalakaua knew this. So he invited those seven astronomers to come here. They set up telescopes on three different islands this island is one of them. Oahu, they had their main station. On Kauai and Waimea town, they had an auxiliary station. And here at Hulihe'e Palace in Kailua Kona, they had an auxiliary station. Everyone in Hawaii was excited about the transit event. Too much so, in fact. Enthusiastic Hawaiians swarmed onto the campsites, asking to observe the stars through the telescopes. To the serious British scientists, the natives became pests. But to the native Hawaiians, it was their love affair for the stars that propelled their interest in the telescopes. The jocular Hawaiian king proposed, if the astronomers would open their observatory grounds to his public for one week, then he, in return, would provide his military band for the scientists' amusement every day while they were there. Ironically, on December 8th, the big day, the king was absent, being in Washington to promote Hawaiian interests in a new trade agreement with the United States. Since those times, Hawaii continues its love affair for the stars. Everywhere there are reminders of Hawaii's place in the cosmos. There is the Kona Galaxy Garden. Here, different plants depict stars, globular clusters, even nebulae. Many bright stars visible in Earth's night sky are depicted on leaves surrounding the marked location of the sun. Even a fountain has been built to represent the central black hole of our galaxy's center. On Mauna Kea, the tallest mountain in the Pacific Ocean is the Mauna Kea Observatory. The observatory is one of the world's largest, most important land-based astronomy sites in the world. The location is ideal because of its dark skies, good astronomical seeing, clean air, good weather, low humidity, position above most of the water vapor in the atmosphere, and almost equatorial location. Along with the observatories, the Earth of Mauna Kea itself has always held a special significance between the Hawaiian people and the cosmos. On Mauna Kea, there is an ancient quarry from which the material for stone adzes were mined. The adze is a tool used for smoothing rough-cut wood into a relatively smooth surface. Adzes are most often used for squaring up logs or for hollowing out timber into something useful, like a canoe. Since the stone adze is the tool by which canoes were made, and since the canoe was navigated by the night stars, the mineral qualities of Mauna Kea are considered sacred. Indeed, atop Mauna Kea, ancient shrines have been found there. Another reminder of Hawaii's place in the cosmos is the Imaloa Astronomy Center, a place where astronomy meets Hawaiian culture. The Bishop Museum is the largest museum in the Hawaiian Islands. It is the premier natural and cultural history institution in the Pacific. It houses the largest array of Hawaiian artifacts, many which represent Hawaii's special place in the cosmos. There is the Polynesian Voyaging Society, whose members voyage throughout Polynesia, navigating without modern instruments. The society builds replicas of ancient Polynesian sea craft and teaches people about the ancient art of star navigation and wayfinding. But one marker, and the one most significant of Hawaii's place in the cosmos, is the island herself. 
Hawaii is the largest island closest to the equator. Serenely and quietly, Hawaii sits in a vast ocean with uninterrupted sight of the night sky. In a majestic way, the night sky is awash with stars from the northern hemisphere and most of the stars from the southern hemisphere. Together, the night sky hemispheres over the islands proclaim Hawaii as a special connecting place to the cosmos. I think for um, peoples around the world, the stars have guided um, th their lives. And so in particular for the Hawaiian people, uh, it was their familiarity and, and use of the stars that guided them here from other islands throughout the Pacific, um, used in navigation. It also um, set up basically their systems of living. It, th by the movement of the stars and by understanding their patterns, our people use that as sort of their calendar. To, to express when was a good time for fishing, when was a good time for planting, when was the time for a peaceful season, when was a time for a warring season. So they were very in tune with the movement of the celestial bodies um, in order to establish their, their system of life. <laughs> 